It was a lot of different emotions as I, uh, uh, as we drove up from uh, New York, uh, uh, Manhattan, to here. You know, I, we're going up the uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, State uh, Parkway. I think that's that's the sign I saw. You know, and then I see uh, uh, Yorktown, a great uh, the site of a great uh, uh, a Revolutionary War site. You know, and and all this history, and I know Franklin Delano Roosevelt's uh, presidency. It was a disastrous uh, 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 depression that we were in, and it took that man and his determination and his creative energy to come up with all those programs and made this country a great country, and uh, pulled us out of that depre uh, depression. His wife, Eleanor Roosevelt, was an extraordinary lady. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of all this as we're driving up. And I'm thinking, I'm going to the home to, uh, of the man who imprisoned me to remember my childhood imprisonment. Only in America could that happen. <laughs> I'm here at his home. I'm talking about it candidly and personally. I don't know whether that can happen in other places in this country. And to know that, uh, as Paul stated, in 1988, the President of the United States, Ronald Reagan, on behalf of the United States government, apologized for a grave mistake and pledged a $20,000 uh, token redress. And in 1991, I got a letter of apology with a check for $20,000 signed by George H. W. Bush. That makes an amazing statement about this country. It's a country that's big enough and confident enough to ultimately, it took a lot of time. My father, who suffered the most, passed in 79, never to know that this government was going to apologize. But it did apologize and paid a token redress. It makes a powerful statement about this government. So it's pride, a little poignance, uh, a, a, a sense of great honor to be coming to a presidential library to talk to a full house like this. It's all those feelings mixed together.